Good morning bosses. Today we will talk it all about Dolphins good news. Miami Dolphins discloses favorites candidate for offensive coordinator position after Friday's interview. Dolphins find out their senior bowl quarterbacks while a trio of Dolphins assistants will coach at the East-West Shrine game. The possibility of 2021 Dolphins free agents, trade or stay. But before we start this train, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss any trains, bosses. Let's go. Dolphins interviewed candidate for offensive coordinator position on Friday, and they will announce it on this Monday. While speaking to ESPN's Cameron Wolf, Dolphins head coach Brian Flores revealed what he is looking for in the Dolphins' next offensive coordinator, mentioning specifically that he wants the new offensive coordinator and starting quarterback Tua Tungavailoa to build a solid relationship. I want them to build together. Learn who he is as a person first and what he does well as a player, said Flores. Flores. But I don't want a coach who can only coach the QB, we've got to coach the whole offense, the line, backs, tight ends, receivers. We need someone who is aligned with my vision with the team. Someone who is going to accentuate the strengths of the players we have on the team. The Dolphins initially had six different candidates on their list, but Tony Elliott of Clemson University reportedly informed the Dolphins that he is planning to stay at Clemson for now. Miami has already interviewed running backs coach Eric Studsville, quarterbacks coach George Godsey, Los Angeles Chargers quarterbacks coach Pep Hamilton, San Francisco 49ers run game coordinator Mike McDaniel and Pittsburgh Steelers quarterbacks coach Matt Canada. According to leaked news, Studsville, McDaniel and Canada are the favorites for the job. The source also said the Dolphins' OC will be announced on this Monday. Last season, the Dolphins, who had a 10-6 record and narrowly missed out on a playoff spot, ranked 22nd in total, often in total offense and 15th in points. Dolphins find out their senior bowl quarterbacks while a trio of Dolphins assistants will coach at the East-West Shrine game. Miami Dolphins were fortunate to be named a senior bowl coaching staff, now they know what quarterbacks they'll work with. On Monday, Senior Bowl director Jim Nagy announced what quarterbacks the Miami Dolphins coaching staff will have on their roster. Nagy also announced that rosters will be released by position daily up to January 23, and with that in mind, we will be breaking these positions down weekly until that day comes. Aside from this being a major advantage with the uncertainty of a combine or even pro days, the Dolphins will have a leg up on other staffs when it comes to scouting the players attending the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. The first group the Dolphins can start planning for are the quarterbacks, and the team will get to scout three players who will more than likely be interesting late-round players who could back up Tua Tungavailoa in the near future. With many already coming for Tungavailoa in his rookie season, from players to fans, the team could be looking for their own version of Kirk Cousins. Cousins was selected to be Robert Griffin III's backup, but would soon become the starter following an injury to RG3 and would make bank. With that in mind, the three quarterbacks the Dolphins will coach are, Notre Dame's Ian Book, Texas's Sam Ellinger, and Arkansas's Felipe Franks. Each of these quarterbacks had somewhat productive college careers and should be interesting to watch down the line. Notre Dame QB Ian Book. Book is an interesting prospect. The graduate senior from Notre Dame led the team to a college football playoffs appearance, only to lose to the eventual national champions in Alabama. In 2020, he had a productive season throwing for 2,830 passing yards with 15 touchdowns and only three interceptions in 12 games ending the year with a 10-2 record. The Fighting Irish are usually a run-heavy football team and that did not change this season. However, Book had six games over two games over 250 passing yards including a 310-yard passing game against Clemson to hand the Tigers their first loss of the season. Yes, that game went into overtime and yes Trevor Lawrence did not play, but Book still faced that Clemson team and was able to help his team win. I can't however say the same thing about their second matchup. Book isn't a player that really wows me, he does his job and his team wins games. The team is armed with elite offensive linemen and above average offensive talent. And their defense sends a good amount of players to the pros. Book looks like he will be a career backup in the pros, but in the right system he could come in and win you games if your quarterback goes down. In terms of the Dolphins, I don't think Book is the right choice for their backup. However, he does seem like a high IQ football player and, depending on the next offensive coordinator, his conservative play style could flourish in an injury situation. 
Ellinger might be the most intriguing quarterback at the Senior Bowl for the Miami Dolphins. Ellinger is that quarterback that everyone pinned as a first-round pick prior to the season based on last season and expected growth but never should that growth and will either be a late day 2 pick or an early day 3 pick. One of the main reasons is that a few years of sitting could do Ellinger wonders, similar to Kirk Cousins in Washington. Ellinger does things right, he puts his body on the line, he has a good arm, he can make plays when you need them, and above all he seems to love winning more than anything. During his time at Texas, he helped show signs of life at moments, but never enough that could have absolutely wowed scouts or fans. However, his will to win and his effort is something that should stand out to Brian Flores and the Dolphins. Ellinger would most likely be a backup to start his career. This pick could be solid barring any unfortunate situation. The need at quarterback isn't as great as many think it to be, no the Dolphins should not draft a quarterback with the third quarterback with the third overall pick, but the team should find a backup for Tungavailoa and an in case Fitzpatrick goes out sorry Fitzpatrick. Felipe Franks has a strong arm, but that might not be enough for Miami Dolphins fans to keep an eye on him Franks transferred from Florida after his junior season after losing his job to Kyle Trask, who is also in this draft class. In Frank's sophomore season, his only as the Gators' full-time quarterback, he had a good season, but it's clear that Trask might be a tad more talented. Fast forward to Frank's senior year and there are a lot of question marks. This season the Razorbacks' quarterback was okay. He threw for 2,107 yards and 17 touchdowns, but the team lost six of nine games including an embarrassing 49-point loss to Alabama. Franks threw for only 90 yards and was sacked seven times ending the days with 13 rushes for minus 25 yards. Now does the blame go to Franks or to the Arkansas team? Truth is I haven't watched enough Arkansas games to decide that, but the defense allowed 42 points per loss. Do we also think Trask is just that much better than Franks, seeing as the team took such a huge jump with Trask at the helm? I also am unsure about that, in my mind this year Florida team had its best offensive skill group that it has had in a long while. Trask did play great, but I am also not totally sold on him. Franks does have a cannon for an arm, but for some players this does more harm than good and seeing how the Dolphins offense was built last year, it will change this year, a cannon for an arm doesn't fit. Similar to Book, I don't see Franks being the right choice at backup, especially since he left Florida without much of a fight. The Dolphins are looking for hard workers who will push each other and I'm sure Franks will have that mindset, but he will have a lot to prove to Flores and co. at the Senior Bowl. Ability of 2021 Dolphins free agents, trade or stay. The 2021 offseason has begun for the Miami Dolphins, though it doesn't figure to feature quite as much roster shuffling. The reason is simple, the Dolphins now have a roster that is much closer to being able to contend than they did at this time last year. Among the first orders of business for Miami will be doing some self-scouting to evaluate its own players, particularly those set to become free agents once the new league year starts March 17. The Dolphins currently have 13 players set to become unrestricted free agents and one set to become a restricted free agent, though they're allowed to re-sign any of them before that March 17 date. Here's a look at those 14 players, with a quick evaluation on their standing on the team and the chances they'll be back in 2021. Players listed in order of 2020 salary, QB Ryan Fitzpatrick, 39 years old, 2020 salary $5.5 million. Fitzpatrick has been really good in his two seasons with two seasons with the Dolphins, regardless of those who keep insisting on pointing to his career arc and refuse to let go of some of his past struggles. As proof, Fitzpatrick finished the 2020 season with a 95.6 passer rating, the second highest of his career. Even though he turned 38 in September, Fitzpatrick still can produce, though the odds of him staying in Miami don't appear very good. For one, he's said time and time again what keeps him going is competing and it's tough to see him being happy returning as the clear backup to Tua Tungavailoa instead of trying to find a team where he could compete for a starting job. Having him on the roster also might not make sense for the Dolphins given that he replaced Tua Tungavailoa twice this season and the coaches aren't going to want Tua looking over his shoulder. RB Matt Breida, 26 years old, 2020 salary $3.3 million. When the Dolphins traded a fifth-round pick to get Breida from the 49ers, the expectation was that he could provide speed and big play ability to defense. It didn't play out that way, with Breida finding himself relegated to a background role. 
maybe the strangest thing of all with Breida was him not getting one snap on offense the last two games after rushing for 86 yards against New England in Week 15. Given that situation, it's difficult to envision Breida being back in 2021. LB Camu Grugier Hill, 27 years old, $3 million. Grugier Hill played 15 games with one start after coming over from the Eagles last March and pretty much provided what was expected of him. He's more of a special teams player with the ability to chip in on defense when needed. It's easy to see him coming back if the financial terms make sense. See Ted Karras, 28 years old, 2020 salary, $3 million. Like Grugier Hill, Karras signed a one-year contract as a free agent last March. As the center on a very young offensive line, Karras provided experience and leadership, and leadership. While his performance was solid, the Dolphins ranked 25th in the NFL in yards per carry up the middle and it's possible the Dolphins will be looking for an upgrade. P. Matt Hawk, 27 years old, 2020 salary, $2.1 million. Hawk rejoined the Dolphins as a restricted free last year, but his contract is up again. Hawk's gross average was in line with his career numbers, his four years have been between 44.5 and 45.0 yards, but the consistency wasn't always there and the Dolphins also gave up two punt returns for touchdowns. LB Vince Beagle, 28 years old, 2020 salary $2.1 million. Beagle never got the chance to build on his promising 2019 season because he tore an Achilles in August. Like Hawk, he had rejoined the Dolphins as a restricted free agent last spring. Look for him to return and try to pick up where he left off before his injury. LB Alandon Roberts, 27 years old, 2020 salary, $2 million. Yet another free agent who joined the Dolphins last March on a one-year deal, Roberts delivered some big plays in run defense, particularly in defense, particularly in short yardage situations. His free agent situation will be complicated by the significant knee injury he sustained in the next-to-last game at Las Vegas. S. Kevin Frazier, 28 years old, $1 million. Another free agent who came on a one-year deal, Frazier ended up being named a special teams captain. Somebody will have to answer for the two punt returns allowed, so maybe there's no guarantee he'll return. R.B. DeAndre Washington, 28 years old, $1 million. Washington got 28 carries in three games after joining the Dolphins via trade and averaged only 3.1 yards per attempt. Maybe the Dolphins will want to see what the former fifth-round pick can provide being with the team from the start, but there's certainly no guarantee he'll be back. W.R. Mac Hollins, 28 years old, $759,000. Hollins has made his name on special teams and he was very good in that aspect for the Dolphins in 2020, which might be enough to earn a return despite some inconsistency catching the ball as a wide receiver. W.R. Isaiah Ford, 25 years old, $825,000. Ford has had quite the journey with the Dolphins since being a seventh-round pick in 2017, bouncing on and off the practice squad, going to and coming back from New England last year before ending on the active roster and having a forgettable season finale at Buffalo. Ford is a guy coaches like because of his preparation and work ethic, which would make it unsurprising if he returned, though he'll have to fight for a roster spot like always. T. Julian Davenport, 26 years old, $747,000. One of the returns from the Laramie Tunsil trade, Davenport barely played in 2020 outside of short yardage situations and one would think he'd want to explore options where he could get himself some playing time. DT Davon Godshow, 27 years old, $650,000. This perhaps is the most intriguing situation involving a Dolphins unrestricted free agent. Godshow had the misfortune of sustaining a pectoral injury four games into his contract year, which obviously didn't give him the chance to raise his market value. The Dolphins likely would welcome him back. T. Adam Pankey, 27 years old, $410,000. Pankey is the one player scheduled to become a restricted free agent and considering he played 28 snaps the entire season, the best guess here is the Dolphins will not be tendering a qualifying offer.